but I don't know that it matters anymore. This is psychotic. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Like, that's crazy, dude. Has accused Russia of interfering in the presidential election, slapping Moscow with new sanctions and new indictments. Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas has the story. Good morning, Pierre. George, good morning. Today, Russian officials are calling the U.S. action a witch hunt that will not go unanswered. But top DOJ and FBI officials are adamant. They claim that Russia is at it again, trying to interfere in this year's election, and they're being more aggressive. This morning, Attorney General Merrick Garland sounding the alarm, warning that Russia is intensifying their efforts to interfere in this year's presidential election. It's an acceleration of, um, and it's an increased sophistication. According to a newly unsealed indictment, Chat, send me some links. I want to see all. I want to see all the times where Tim Mother Pool has pushed the the Russian propaganda. I really, really need to see it. This is one of the one of those moments. is so good. There's so many of them. Oh my lord. I mean, dude, this actually makes me kind of mad because like Mother said, I was pro Russia and I didn't get the bag. Like for years. They still say I'm pro-Russia, and I didn't even get the bag, dude. Bro, there is no way you just linked a f***ing Destiny clip. Tier 3, 5 most subscriber. We, we must be on opposite world right now. <laughs> Are you all right, Chatter? Tim Pool talked about I Ukraine think on Palestine PBD where he said different. Ukraine lost. Oh, my God. Patrick but David with Jimmy Dore and Tim Pool. But I don't know that it matters anymore. Okay, okay, let's, let's cover this first, and then we'll get to the clips. The Department of Justice alleging that senior aides to Vladimir Putin, including his so-called right-hand man, are engaging in a sweeping online operation aimed at supplying millions of Americans with disinformation. These websites were designed to appear to American readers as if they were major U.S. news sites like the Washington Post or Fox News. But in fact, they were fake sites. The government seizing 32 bogus website domains purchased by Russian security services that mirror legitimate news sites, creating fake stories and using authentic looking logos as part of a campaign called Doppelganger. And DOJ also. Ukrainians aren't angels either, so there has to be that discussion in that regard. Why? Why? Why do this? Okay. Hold on. Where is it? Here. They know it. But I don't know that it matters anymore. This is psychotic. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Like, that's crazy, dude. That shit pisses me off, dude. This shit is fucked up. Where's my bag, Russia? Where's my fucking bag? God damn it. Where the fuck is my Kremlin bag? For the past three years, every dumb with a Ukrainian flag in their fucking bio on Twitter has been calling me a Russian operative. I ain't ever got a single fucking dollar, dude. All I got was these motherfuckers calling me gay. <laughs> Ukraine is the enemy of the United States. <laughs> He's so cute. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. They are expanding this war. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you've got criminal elements of the U.S. government pushing them and guiding them and telling them what to do. Ukraine is now accused, a German warrant issued for blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, in, uh, 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 triggering this conflict. Yeah, no, this is, yeah. Ukraine also has those uh, Venezuelan time travel guns where they went forward in time. I get, who would have the time travel weapons in this situation? Like, who, who would have the time travel gun? Would it be Russia, I guess? They knew that Ukraine was going to, in the future, blow up the Nord Stream pipeline. So then they, then they invaded ahead of time. A lot of guys with time traveling uh, powers, you know? Just like Hitler had the time travel gun. And, and that's, why, that's why he had to. <laughs> that's why he had to, uh, you know do the Holocaust, according to the other guy, Daryl Davis, or whatever the fuck the dude's name is that we were listening to yesterday. They had to do a preventative invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine is the greatest threat to this nation and to the world. We should rescind all funding and financing, pull out all military support, and we should apologize to Russia. They know it. We should apologize to Russia. Cha-ching.
That's the big bag right there. This is psych. Um, we already saw this one. Okay, there's got to be more, right? Please tell me there's more. Uh, there's a really funny Tim Pool clip. Wait, is this the same one? Financing. Pull out all and they know it. But I don't know that it matters anymore. This is psych accused. A German about all military support. And there was another one. Hold on. Where the fuck was it? God damn it. Oh, this is really funny. Tim Pool advocating for the death penalty for people who have found to have accepted money for We're treason. talking about crime and punishment and Donald Trump needs to go after these people. Laura was saying, take the gloves off. Stop being nice to them. Fuck them. And I said they should all be arrested. There should be lists. Laura said we should give anyone who committed treason the death penalty. And then the show gone because YouTube doesn't allow calls for the death penalty. That's why they deleted our episode of Alex Jones the first time it happened three years ago. And he didn't even say anything crazy. He said, I agree with Bill Gates. We should have firing squads. And he later was like, I, I meant vaccines. Line them up. Give them shots. Get them. Get them. Get them. Mm -hmm. He was being he was, it's like I was making a joke. I was sarcastically. Well, I'm, saying, not, I'm not going to pull an Alex Jones. I stand by everything I said. <laughs> I'm not sorry for anything I said. I truly believe that people there may be different uh, different interpretations of what it means to commit treason. I truly believe that the people who engaged in the coup against Donald Trump and have caused you know, civil unrest and chaos in our country for the last seven years uh, through Crossfire Hurricane and also th through these, uh, what I believe are illegal witch hunts against the president of the United States right now, unconstitutional witch hunts against Donald Trump. They are treasonous. They are traitors. They should get the death penalty when they are jailed in the next Trump administration. And I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I, you know, was not trying to get your stream taken down, but oh, no, no, my no, belief is held by millions of Americans. And you're I, saying I really do when, believe that when they are arrested or when they're indicted, arrested, and tried, they have a trial and convicted. Yes. Should they be found to have committed treason by a jury of their peers? You say death penalty. Absolutely. Do you? Oh, awesome. September 1st, 2023. Russia activates world's most powerful nuke. Let's go. <laughs> Tim Pool floats wild theory about Ukraine war. Hello, Tomasi. Overwhelmingly, it is women supporting the war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. And and what I mean by that yeah, is because I'm, they're I'm, getting death benefits. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 particularly extrapolating the data, but women. Uh, dude, this guy is a fucking brilliant political mind, dude. I mean, okay, okay. I know I say it's like really easy to grift to the right. Okay, I know I say it is really easy to gr grift to the right, which it is, right? But like. Turning the invasion of Ukraine into not only anti-Ukrainian sentiment, but also anti-woman. I mean, that's fucking fire. He is creative. Okay. He is fucking creative, dude. He literally looked at, he looked at Russia invading Ukraine and he said, how can I make this about women? <laughs> yeah, this was awesome. Feds crack down on Russian election disinformation efforts. I wonder who this guy is. I feel like Russia was scammed. How are they paying Tim Pool millions for the shitty messaging? I think a lot of the other stuff that Russia does also plays a role in this. I used to always joke about... There's older fucking clips of me on here that you can find, I'm sure. I don't know if Little Bear is around. Where I routinely talked about how fucking stupid Republicans are for, like, hating the USSR their whole lives and hating Russia their whole lives, and then flipping on a dime because of some Telegram channels. And that's the other part of this process. Like, this isn't just Tim Pool. Russia's been putting a lot of fucking money and effort into manipulating uh, manipulating Republicans into demonstrating pro-Russia sentiment. It's just like, it blows my mind that you just cast aside social conditioning for your whole life, and on the flip of a dime, uh, turn pro-Russia. It's crazy. It's actually fucking crazy. Vote Democrat at a very, very high rate relative mm -hmm. to men. Certainly men do vote Democrat too, but I believe Pew Research a couple years ago, it's like 55% of men vote Republican, 45 Democrat among women, it's like mm -hmm. 70%. Mm -hmm. So there is a higher proportion of women who are voting in favor of Democrat policy, which sends our money to war and com conflict and combat, pushing us towards World War III in which they have no material obligation uh, uh, to their lives the way men do with the draft. Mm -hmm. So I take particular offense to this, but uh, uh, to go back to what you were saying, I don't know if you saw the video 
Someone did a man on the street where they go around asking men, do men need women? All the men yeah. say, yes, of course. We use that on Access Vegas. They, they ask the women, do women need men? They all say no. And so my point about war is many of these women, 70% uh, voting Democrat, hmm. are pushing us towards a massive war where as soon as the war breaks out, they immediately turn around and beg the men to save their lives. I have some... Okay, I don't want to... I don't care about this guy's analysis, but the video itself is pretty funny. Um, Tim Pool says he's been contacted by the FBI as a potential victim of a crime. September 5th. I've been contacted by the FBI as a potential victim of a crime. The FBI believes I have information relevant to an ongoing criminal investigation and have requested a voluntary interview. I will be offering my assistance in this matter. Oh, it's so good. And I don't think these people who have been supporting uh, the, the funding and the war in Ukraine know anything about supply chain, economics, fuel costs, energy costs, uh, energy return on energy invested. I don't think they understand any of these things. I don't think they understand food requirements. You know, when... Uh Dude, doesn't Tim Pool kind of like kill the argument that like women go for men with a lot of money? Like he was getting paid 400 grand a month and you still are out here dry as the Sahara desert dog. You still remain bitchless. You got no bitches, Tim pool. Zero, zero bitches, bro. How is that possible? You have four, you were getting paid 400 grand on the side from the goddamn Russian government, dude. Oh my Lord, dude. How are you so fucking down bad? Holy fuck. Turns out there is obviously other shit that women care about, like not being the worst person on the planet. I also still don't understand how this motherfucker has not gotten hair plugs. Like, bro, we get it. Like, you're ashamed of being bald. Just get fucking hair plugs. You got paid $100,000 every week by the Russian government, dude. How in the ever-loving fuck did you not go out there and just get some goddamn hair plugs. It makes no fucking sense. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, dude. Shit. Pimples, mental gymnastics over the Russia-Ukraine situation. I'm starting a group called Anti-War. We will actively support violent war in Ukraine so long as it's our side doing it and claim that Russia is the real warmonger. Our war is justified because our war to stop others from starting war that proves we are anti-war. Oh my God. Russia wanted to send a woman spy, but even the Russians would find that the... Uh, <laughs> That to be obvious is he was so unfuckable. How much did the Russians pay for him for this? <laughs> Moke agenda preventing me from having sex. Coming from a major Ukraine supporter, your criticisms of the military industrial complex are highly warranted. Thank you. A Tennessee-based company allegedly funded by Russian operatives as part of a Kremlin-driven influence operation targeting the 2024 U.S. election has been identified as Tenet Media, according to a U.S. official. The Justice Department's indictment, unsealed in New York's Southern District, accuses two RT employees of funneling nearly $10 million to the company, referred to in court documents as Company One. According to indictment, Two individuals set up the company to give it legitimacy, knowing Russian money was behind the operation. The alleged goal was to promote pro-Russian narratives, pushing content favoring Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump and other Kremlin-friendly figures. Commentators associated with Tenet Media include Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, and Dave Rubin. What is this? New tweet just dropped. This is where they get Pool to commit. That they that he didn't know about the Russian funding, it might help charge Chen and Donovan, but it would also serve to lock Pool into that story. DOJ likely can't charge Chen and Donovan unless they do lock in the talent. Yeah, no, for sure, they'll harass him a little bit. They they'll say he will get legal repercussions in an effort to get a fucking plea deal out of it to rat out Lauren Chen and Lauren Chen's husband. Here's another good clip from Tim Pool. So what happens with social media, particularly YouTube, where it's really easy, you can have a foreign agent or even the government or some corporation or whatever say, this guy talks about things that we really like. Dump ad money into his channel through Google AdSense and they'll never know we were the ones funding him and you can't prove it. Well, by the way, I get a shit ton of fucking Republican ads so on my YouTube page. So I don't know if that's what's going on, but I will say that for Tim Pool, it wasn't AdSense that got him. You know, they directly, they directly dumped money into his lap. And 
the reality is, I mean, they were paying him a hundred grand for like 17 K views and shit. Okay. I never even looked at how insignificant Tim Pool's viewership is. They were paying him millions for this. There are so many valid critiques of U.S. NATO role in Ukraine. Tim Pool is so stupid. He just says Ukraine is woke. Yes, because obviously Tim Pool doesn't have a fucking stake in this beyond the fact that he's getting paid to put out pro-Russian propaganda, which is really fucking annoying because valid critiques of the U.S. interest in Ukraine is not fucking Russian propaganda. And yet, nonstop, these dumb fucks, nonstop, these dumb fucks kept saying that. Oh. So do you think YouTube, do you think that's something like YouTube should be looking into or somebody should audit YouTube for that kind of information? Definitely. If it's you think YouTube's in on it? I don't think YouTube's <laughs> in on it. I think YouTube doesn't care. Yeah. And as long as goal. journalists don't call them out for it, they're not going to say anything. That's going to cause another adpocalypse. Are you ready that's, for that? That's, th that's the big problem. Mm. But I, I think, I've said it a million times, if they announced that they were going to like ban Twitter, I would lose my account. I'd be like, dude, Twitter's terrible. Yeah, get is. rid of it. Just get rid of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm half kidding. Like, no, no it's bad for us. You know, but, but if, if it turned, if I found out that someone was secretly funneling money through AdSense to my channel, I'd be like, cut it all off. I don't care. Well, I'll go I, sleep I, in a I ditch. I some news for you. Oh yeah, he definitely would. Like, for example, if he found out that like a foreign entity was giving him a hundred thousand dollars to display pro-Russian sentiment, you know, then um, he would just say, "Cut it all out, dude. Cut it all out. Don't give me that money." Just kidding. We know what he fucking said. Okay, we know what he fucking said. He said, "Thank you. Please give me some more." Ukraine's invasion of Russia risks World War Three. Russia could use nuclear weapons of retaliation. U.S. buys two hundred ninety million. Dollars are the radiation drugs amid report U.S. formerly operating in Ukraine. Trump warns of World War III as Pentagon leaks prove Russia is not losing Ukraine. World War III is coming. What is this? Hey, hey. Lauren Chen on Tim Pool in Ukraine two years ago. And I don't know if it's because maybe someone at Twitter has it out for him. Because I know technically trending on Twitter is a good thing because, hey, all publicity is good publicity. But it seems like call at investments.com than just Pool's tweet with his terrible commentary and even though the obvious misrepresentation was like there for everybody to see ethan's tweet still got an enormous amount of likes because frankly if you are still following ethan klein at this point unironically and you think his political or social takes are worth like literally anything it's just you you re-examine you re-examine your choices. But anyway, Ethan's tweet did get a surprising amount of traction. In fact, so much traction that Tim Pool did end up trending and it seemed like the consensus among a Adam McKay. Breaking news, Iran has infiltrated a Russian US election interference plot that is actually a front for a Chinese plan. Meanwhile, APAC openly bought the US government for 100 million bucks. More breaking news, student protesters are actually behind the nation of Iran. Freshmen at the East Coast University have been running the nation for decades. Yeah, this person says, that's a low estimate when you factor in the impressive long-term, though admittedly less public until recently, commitment, decades of dedicated investment at local, state, and federal levels, which is also true. Ethan is 100% going to get butthurt that you watch that. What, do I think that fucking Lauren Chen is right here? Are you guys stupid? She just got indicted. Are you guys fucking stupid? Do you think I'm in agreement with a fucking paid Russian operative that is doing pro-Russian commentary? You know, she's a fucking freak ass Nazi before the pro Russian money, right? Like a lot of these people, including this fucking freak and Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, I hated even before they were fucking uh, outed as like Russian propagandists. You know that, right? Would you consider that treason perhaps? No, um, because she's not even American. She's Canadian. And I'm actually kind of confused because I wonder if that like puts her citizenship in the question here like i don't know if she's actually i don't know if she was in the process of getting a citizenship or i don't know if she was already a citizen at this point anyway israel feared legal trouble over u.s advocacy efforts leaked files suge uh, suggest exclusive officials concerned by foreign agent law proposed creation of american nonprofit to avoid scrutiny israel does this shit on a daily basis um, but you know, obviously not a peep from our boys. Okay. Because a lot of people would have to be indicted in this situation. Peep the counter messaging. APAC emerges as moderate force in political primaries. <laughs> Kaya place. Waltz in an interview with WCM UN news today was asked about the Harris Waltz administration and the, on um, the Israel Hamas war, and it would break with the Biden administration. Here's the full answer. Waltz. 
Well, I think first and foremost, what we first saw on October 7 was, was a horrific act of violence against the people of Israel. They have certainly, and the vice president said it, I've said it, have a right to defend themselves, and the United States will always stand by that. But we can't allow what's happening in Gaza to happen. The Palestinian people have every right to life and liberty themselves. We need to continue, I think, to put the leverage on to make sure we move towards a two-state solution. I think we're at a critical point right now. We need the Netanyahu government to start moving in that direction. But I think those folks who are speaking out loudly in Michigan are speaking out for all the right reasons. It's a humanitarian crisis. It can't stand the way it is. And we need to find a way that people can live together in this. And we've said it and continue to say it, getting a ceasefire with the return of the hostages and then moving towards a sustainable two-state solution is the only way forward. This should be Kamala Harris's statement. And then Tim Wall should be outflanking Kamala Harris with an even more progressive message. Just for the record, first time leverage has uh, been mentioned, at least subtly. Even then, it still hits us with the fucking both sizes shit. But do you understand what I'm saying? If you're the vice president of the United States of America right now and you're running for president, that should be your statement. Openly pro protester, openly recognizing the humanitarian crisis that Israel has brought about in Gaza. Okay. And, and beyond that, um, beyond that, most importantly, uh, we need to continue, I think, to put the leverage on to make sure we can move towards a two-state solution. Even then, I think, even then, they should pick Shapiro. Yeah, you're right. I think Kamala Harris should just, like, you know, use a, a, a B-52 bomber herself. I think she should commandeer an AC-130 Warthog and directly laser entire city blocks that remain in Gaza. That way she can show her undying loyalty and commitment to Israel's security, I think. Like, that's what I think. Honestly. Yeah. Kamala Harris should just say, fuck it. Like, we have to compromise. We have to compromise. And, and for that reason, I think we need to compromise by just killing every child. We can leave the adults in Gaza, but we should kill all the babies in Gaza. That's the compromise pick, I think. Slap a fucking Brat Summer sticker on the side of that bomber and we're good to go. It would be Brat. Yeah. Upon Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. Uh Tim Pool also after this stuff came out of him um tweeted, "Upon reflection, I now understand that Ukraine is our greatest ally. As the breadbasket of Europe and a peace-loving people, we cannot allow the fascist Russians to continue their crimes against humanity. We must redouble our efforts and provide an additional 200 billion at once." So, um he's memeing for those of you who don't fucking understand. I'm begging you to be normal. Please settle down. What? What did I do that was abnormal? <laughs> oh, there you go. <sighs> Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy. For their millions of followers, influencers like Tim Pool and Laura Southern are sticking it to the mainstream media. Contrary, alternative right, independent. People are at a boiling point. Yeah, not so independent, it seems. This is what I'm saying. Even if it was a fucking cause you agree with, you shouldn't be getting paid for your fucking political commentary if you claim to be independent, okay? I don't. I think it's fucking ridiculous that people do. Straight up. The indictment revealed how American social media influencers were hired by Tenet Media, with some being told that the project was founded by a man named Edward. However, the indictment states that Edward was a fictional persona. One influencer was initially offered $2 million per year to create content for Tenet Media, according to the indictment. One of the company's founder later remarked it would need to be closer to $5 million yearly for him to be interested. Despite expressing doubts about who was financing the project and asking for more information about Edward, the influencer eventually agreed to a contract worth $400,000 per month to produce four weekly videos, along with a $100,000 signing bonus. Tennessee Business Records identified two individuals associated with Tenet Media, Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan. Donovan's Twitter account lists him as the president of Tenet Media and his Instagram profile describes him as Chen's husband. And understandably so. Crowds are gathering in Southport. People For others, though, they're the effluencers, spewing out hate, excavating division, cashing in on the, the culture wars. The indictment issued by the U.S. Justice Department yesterday doesn't concern itself with that, though. Its focus, an alleged illegal money trail that it says connects alt-right influencers to Vladimir Putin. 
It's all part of a broader operation by U.S. law enforcement to clamp down on a Russian campaign to influence the American presidential election in November. The idiots are going to rip you apart for that one? Wait, what do you mean? Why? Did I stutter? Like, I, I don't understand. If you are an independent political commentator who cares about editorial control, saying the independents shouldn't get paid, yeah, if you are independent media and you are presenting yourself as uncompromised and you get paid by political operatives to, like, issue out fucking takes, takes that you do not even disclose that you're getting paid by... uh political operatives fucking ridiculous like a big part a big part of the advocacy for independent media straight up stems from people saying oh we're not paid by raytheon like cnn okay but you're paid by the russian government like what the fuck do you mean like that's insane yeah cnn is compromised they have biases right it's fucking ridiculous that you turn around and you shit on mainstream media and you act like you have uh, an independent streak, and then it fucking comes out that you're getting paid by the Russian government? Like, what are we talking about? Where's the integrity? I can already see the Reddit thread. Millionaire said you shouldn't make money as a political commentator taking what you say out of context. I don't care, okay? I didn't start off at this fucking point, and I got here with my community, okay? It's ridiculous. There's a, there is a reason why there is a fucking reason why I, I have a subscription method for my revenue, okay? It is what keeps me independent. If you don't fucking care about what I have to say or if you disagree with me, you can log off, okay? You can just refuse to fund me. Many people still watch and don't fund me, you know? You can also sell your merch if you want to your audience. There's plenty of things you can do. And I say this as someone who like refuses to take ads for the most part, but I do still do advertisements every now and then. Okay. If I want to play a fucking video game and the company wants to give me money to do so, then yeah, I'll take it. But that's a little different. Don't you think than just straight up being like, uh, you know, straight up fucking running around and being like, Oh dude, I am in favor of, I don't know this or that thing. And then it comes out that you're getting fucking, and it turns out that you're getting paid by that community, by that group. Yeah, and I also have to legally admit to being paid in the advertised segment. There are laws around it. It's very fucking annoying. It is really, really fucking annoying to see people being transparent and do not lie by saying you're independent. Yeah, I think it's fucking ridiculous. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, dude. I, I, I got no big funders. It's like, turns out the biggest funder is your funder. It's the goddamn Russian government. The devil, though, is in the detail of the federal indictment. It's issued against two Russian media executives in Moscow, but brings the reader on quite the ride. Here is the gist of it. The indictment alleges that two people working for Putin's favorite media outlet in Moscow, RT, funneled around $10 million to a Tennessee-based company, exactly matching the description of Tenet Media. So you're saying that if Tim Pool would have said, hashtag ad, Ukraine is the enemy of the world, and spouting on his paid Russian propaganda, he would have been okay? No. But even beyond that, like, obviously that one is, that is ridiculous to begin with. And I'm stating that, like, it's doubly ridiculous that he also maintains this, like, shred of independence. Like, that's the point I'm making, okay? It's doubly not okay. It was founded by right-wing YouTuber Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan. The company then distributed the money to its stable of content creators. The influencers on Tenet's book include Tim Pool, Lauren Southern, Dave Rubin, and Benny Johnson. The indictment does not say that Moscow told the influencers themselves directly what to say. Today, Pool and some of the others addressed the issue and said they were duped by the Russians. Look, I have no sympathy for these fucking assholes, okay? No sympathy for roaming millennial Lauren Chan, and certainly no sympathy for Lauren Southern either, who literally fucking back in the day, worked with Identity Europa, a fucking neo-Nazi group, to try and actively sink migrant ships at a time when migrants were fucking dying on those ships anyway without their interference. Like, there is no... And she documented that whole process. Like, 
if you fucking try to rehabilitate the image of a person like that, you are a clown ass, delusional, right wing fucking loser. And yes, I'm talking about destiny. Okay. I don't give a fuck how horny you get. There is no, there is no real reason to rehabilitate someone like that. That's why I always say, take note of who people present their enemies as. Okay. I don't have a bunch of those people that were in this indictment that I tried to fuck actively. Okay. He did. He can chirp about it all day, every day. He can talk about how he hates Tim Pool while he's also a centrist of a similar variety now. It's disgusting. The very definition, according to some, of a useful idiot. Did you read the indictment? It clearly says that I, as well as the other personalities, were victims. We were deceived by people intentionally to trick us into licensing our content to them. The founders of Tenet Media, though, who he was claiming it was vindication for him that they were revealed as Russian assets. How can he claim that it's vindication for him when two of the people that were the main person who was like the Russian asset and also the another person in the indictment who was also a Russian asset are both people that he's tried to rehabilitate and like aligned with as a fucking friend. I mean, his his sycophantic fan base are not normal people anyway. Um, so ultimately, they don't give a shit. Just like they don't give a shit that he did a fucking NFT shill. Okay? Like, inconsistency is not a thing for a person like Destiny who claims to be the most consistent moral authority online. Okay? That's precisely the reason why... It's fucking ridiculous when he will talk a lot about, like, the term cracker being a fucking anti-white racist slur and then simultaneously say the N-word openly, okay? Openly! And his followers don't give a shit either because they're nihilistic edgelords who just want to, you know, win arguments, even if it's just for a b brief moment. Anyway, yeah, Mr. N-word Ellie. <laughs> it's also fucking ridiculous because... I remember the NFT shill. You were at Twitch event in like 2022 when it when it did. He did it. One of the rare times back then where you would bring up D. You know, we also saw what his fucking fan base, his racist ass fan base looks like when the guy was like, I'm shaking. Who had these influencers on their books were told by the Russians the position to take on some issues, according to the indictment. The Russian foreign ministry today described it as an assault on free speech. We asked Tenet Media about Paymasters, Pipers, and the tune today. We're still awaiting a reply. From the post-millennial, DOJ indicts two RT Media-affiliated Russians, accuses them of laundering $10 million to conservative company Tenet Media to sow division in U.S. The DOJ alleged Friends. the two concocted a scheme to create and distribute what content to U.S. audiences. Bro, I don't even remember this. What is um, this? Every single person on the internet every single person on the internet okay that is pushing nfts is just trying to find a bigger sucker that's it that's all yeah. it is every one of them <laughs> basically scammers that's, i consider that all of them crypto is too man there's people who never stop tweeting about crypto yeah, i know but like so can dump it. i wish there was like a big macro there needs to be a macro accounting of human behavior because we all grow up making fun of certain people but like all yeah. it is every oh man it's crazy Again, even from the most basic shit to like, from all the way from the most basic shit to like inconsistencies of the highest order, it still does not matter. Hassan, could you read my deleted message? I don't want to type it again. It's about this. You can even drag it off screen. What? I had to involve myself out of everything uh, and everyone in the chat, but I try to tell people about this and the multiple charges him, progressive victory and all a lot of other streamers have. I might have gone about it the wrong way with making songs, but I thought it was more cohesive and more effort than some randomized drama essay. There's more to all of them. It's easily Googleable, and I'm only saying this because at some point it'll come up. What? Jenkin Anna just called you out for not knowing shit about the Aurora gang buildings? <laughs> okay, well, again, it's weird, but I do routinely, I do routinely get called out seemingly by people who ascribe to a lot of right wing values. Huh. No, bro, you don't get it. It's definitely happening. Like Venezuelan gangs have been taken over. They've they've done it for sure. It's because I'm secretly being paid by the Venezuelan gangs. Oh, here is Fox News covering the Tim Pool story, by the way. On this. Okay. I'm 
think that Vladimir Putin wants the guy who stood next to him in Helsinki and says, oh, he didn't do anything. He told me we were just meeting. And he said he didn't interfere in the election at all, even though our own Department of Justice had found that he did. Yeah. What I find interesting Tell about him, everyone's Jessica. analysis thus far on this topic is that you're leaving out the juiciest tidbit, which is that the Russians were paying Tim Pool and Benny Johnson $400,000 a month for a weekly video that would go out to their millions of followers. 400000 a, a month? month? Yes, more than Hunter Biden was making. You know, I'm available, you know, too, if you want to pay me <laughs> yeah. for that money. But that's, oh, that's you, know, you make a joke out of it, and they have denied that they knew that it, it was coming from a, a Russian in, in that way. But they were getting what talking did you get that info? Because I thought it was anxiety. going through. I thought it was going through Lauren Chen. Wasn't yes. it her company? Well, and that it's it was that Tennessee-based yes, company. Yes, and that they hired him as to do something. And well, then they've they been doing go. videos, and the, these kinds of talking points have been showing up in those videos. And oh, you mean like the, talking points like inflation's high? <laughs> no, like talking about. You mean yeah. like yeah. DEI is bad? Yeah, that, or like that kind of talking point. Let, let Russia have Ukraine. It sows discord, which is the point. Mm -hmm. th that they don't, they want people, first of all, to think that life is completely terrible under oh. the Biden Harris administration. Okay, let me ask you. YouTube removed several channels on Thursday, including one owned by Tenet Media, which hosted live streams and segments featuring right wing pundits like Tim Pool and Benny Johnson. The Justice Department alleges in its indictment that Tenet Media's operations were funded by Russia. Before its removal, Tenet's YouTube channel had around 316,000 subscribers and featured clips, segments, and live streams from, from shows hosted by these pundits. Users attempting to access the channel now see a message indicating it was taken down for violating YouTube's community guidelines. As of now, Tenet's website remains online, listing personalities such as Poole, Johnson, Dave Rubin, Lauren Sutton, Taylor Hansen, and Matt Christiansen on its roster, although many have distanced themselves from the company. Then its social media accounts on TikTok, X, Instagram, and Facebook also remain active, though their last posts were made late Wednesday or early Thursday. Then its video channel on Rumble, a platform known for positioning itself as immune to cancel culture, remains active with the same content as the now defunct YouTube channel, but it only has 11,500 followers. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And thanks for watching.